Ooh, baby. It's early, real early. I got some cool things I want to share with you today. And uh, not to mention, we're gonna put some fish in the boat. We're gonna do some live active captain. It's only like, it's 6 a.m. and that sun is just coming up. Check it out. I was going to Burn Lake today and I decided I'd stay back here and see how the fishing's been going on here. Got some guide trips coming up, so we're pre-fishing. But I've got some pretty cool stuff I want to share with you guys today. And uh, I've been sharing a lot of this stuff on TikTok, so I'm going to kind of make this video about some of those items that have really sparked conversations over on that side. So if you haven't checked me out on TikTok, check it out. I can't believe I'm saying TikTok. That's ridiculous, I know. But anyway, check that out. That's It don't get much better than that. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. It's early. I can't talk. And uh, we're gonna be putting, we're gonna be putting fish in the boat, no doubt. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies. <laughs> oh, he's a baby. He's a baby. But he hit that hard. That's a good start right there, though. That was only about two casts in and uh, again we're trying to see whether or not these fish are active or not I've been doing a lot of guide trips on Wren Lake lately and uh, trying to identify when this fall bite starts now usually that's typically around uh, these guys are definitely more active than they were before but um, usually you're looking for temperatures in the 70s and right now we're sitting at roughly about 80 degree water temperature here. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's clear water. So it definitely, does, the heat, the temperature doesn't fluctuate as much as perhaps if you had a dirty water, muddy water, where the sun really warms it up quickly and cools it down quickly. Uh, so one of the things that I've been talking about on TikTok was the zero degree versus eight degree mount for your LVS 32. I suppose you can use the same thing for the LVS 34. I'm not quite sure about that since I don't have one. But uh, I could tell you that, you know, it's always been a kind of a thing that people have done is they've used that zero degree versus a, oh, that eight degree that comes with the LVS 32. And what that does is, I'll show you a packet here shortly. Hold on. Oh. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I think it's something you learn as you've been fishing, but you can buy these on Amazon right here. I, again, not sponsored by them, don't care. You can get them at uh, Garmin. You can also get them on Amazon. I get them on Amazon. They're zero degree mounts. And basically what happens is it takes that eight degree, turns it into zero degree. It means that your sonar is straight up and down. And to me, and it makes more sense is that with the sonar straight up and down that bait can fall right through that sonar and you don't have to move it as much you don't have to follow it as much whereas if it's on eight degree which is the reason i believe that eight degree is there to get it away from the barrel of the trolling motor so it's cutting it's like this so if your bait's falling straight and your sonar is like this you're kind of having to constantly follow it a lot more so a degree zero degree mount 30 bucks is nice to have now you will break these even the eight degree that comes with a garmin lvs 32 you'll break that as well you'll run up in the stump you'll break it so you always want to have one or two of these in the boat and i'll tell a story real quick when i was at uh, lake of the pines literally within the first hour of being out there we were in waves and my transducer hit a stump broke this guy okay i was fortunate enough to have one in my boat while i was out there i changed it good to go so it's, it's, that would have ruined my whole trip. I would have had to find one. There's not really uh, bait shops that are there that would carry something like this. It certainly would have been a process. But not only that, I felt nervous the rest of the time I was there. When I was, if you look back two years ago, I was nervous because I knew I didn't have another one of these in my boat. 
And I certainly didn't want to break it. So. Well, that is a fish, no doubt about it, but not the size that we're looking for. You guys ever see this, like, you know, we're talking, we're right there in that transition period right now, and it just seems like I'm seeing a lot of schools of fish, which I typically don't see schools this time of year. It's interesting. there all right well we're catching fish but we still haven't really and I can see the big dogs check this out you can see the big fish so when you look big fish definitely big fish in the center right there that's what we're fishing right now and the tough thing right now is just getting those big fish to commit you can get the small guys but the big fish are the ones that we're we're going at Listen to that sniping braid, baby. I love it. That fish barely breathed on that line. And we caught it. And I have 100% confidence that the reason why is because of the sniping braid. It's so sensitive. And again, I always tell people on my home lake, I use the optimal, which is the four strand, 10 pound, smallest diameter possible. Which is super sensitive, you have to know that. And um, and then when I go to other lakes, Grenada, Bryn Lake, um, I use the 12 pound or the optimized, either one. Um, this optimized would feel really good on this lake as well, but I'm so used to, and people that have tried it, they all will agree that it's the smoothest cast there is out there. So, All right. Right there. So one of the other videos that I've been doing, doing a lot with is, uh, hopefully you saw that one video with cornfield crappie gear. I'll link it here above and the side mount right there. So Mark was absolutely right. We don't move that right at this point. Maybe in the future I will, but either way, I've been fishing it with it now for about a week, two weeks, uh, two weeks and uh, doesn't get in our way, doesn't seem to bother guide trips, honestly. So I think maybe in rare situations, I will take that, this coupling off here. And again, watch that video and you'll see what I'm talking about. You can actually remove this and there's just, there's just a plate there, which makes it awesome. I mean, just streamline. I mean, it keeps the boat clean if you wanna take that off. And that's our side mount for the second uh, live scope system. So the only reason why I'm not using it right now, cause I do wanna, use it some especially during these videos is that i'm looking for a a, a new black box garmin's supposed to be sending me one um, because there's something wrong with that that black box i'm not quite sure but either way uh, that'll probably be another video, another video as you all know so uh today we're just fishing with the the 10 footer ozark rods uh doesn't get any better than that three pound fishing elite series and uh the three pound fishing tackle as you know i love a paddle tail and I am, like I said, I'm messing with some scents now, scents uh, to see if how that impacts this tough bite, you know, from one lake to the next, that type of thing. I always think it's good to add some things to your, uh, your toolbox. And I think those are, scents is definitely one of them. So I'm working with something to see if we can't do something with that. So you stay tuned, you stay tuned. So yeah, let's put a couple more fish in the boat. We're still looking for those, uh, those bigger fish. That didn't take long. Ooh, that's not a bad fish. I'm telling you, man, the ones that hang out those stumps all the way down there on that dirt line, that's a much better fish. Tend to be bigger. And you can feel how warm they are. Water temperature closer up to the power plant right now, 82 degrees, that ain't good. So, for us. 
And like I normally always do, we release them, we let them go. We ain't keeping none. I always keep about two bags of frozen fish in the freezer. That's what I got. That means that in case I need them, I got them. But 90% of the time, when my wife says she wants to go do a, uh, she wants a fish fry, I make that a game. And I see how long it takes me to get whatever the request is. Typically the request is about 15 fish. But I always say, how fast can I get 15 fish? And I, you know, I'm more of a fan, to be quite honest with you, of the small eaters. People say they want big fish, not me. I think the smaller fish, I think the smaller fish are better. They're the first ones everybody grabs. Why not have a plate of those? Um, that's my theory, but to each his own. I'd like to hear your comments on that. I also like my fish to come out of the fall or winter seasons. I don't know why that is. I don't probably, probably has no bearing on it whatsoever. But I prefer, if I'm going to keep some fish, them come out of those seasons. I think it's something about the, I feel like the meat is a little firmer. Is there any truth to that? That's the question. I just, I, I doubt there's any truth to that. All right, guys, I think that's going to end it. Let me show you what I'm fishing with here. So hang on for a second. I'm going to show it to you. Uh, what I've been using today, another eater. That's the 32nd ounce, three pound fishing tackle, pink jig head. They're awesome jig heads. The number one in the industry as far as I'm concerned. This is the Blue Monkey. Uh, paddle tail just dropped it um, in the boat in the corner there. Um, so that's the combination. It's definitely getting it done, catching a ton of fish. Um, check those out at 3poundfishing.com. We just missed it. And guess what I changed to, folks? A hair jig. Mr. Notably, Gumdrop. They love them on my website. Thanks for watching 3 Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies.